Now, video games are a fantastic medium, which allow you to go on epic adventures and explore unbelievable stories from the comfort of your own living room. However, let's be honest, life just gets busy and we don't always have those 10, 15 or 20 hours to sit through to fully uncover a story that a game is trying to present you with. Well, if that's your case, worry not because I am here and today I will be giving you the story of Subnautica summed up in as short of a time as we possibly can. So you can know what it's all about without necessarily putting in all the hours before the release of Subnautica Below Zero. So without any further ado, put on your Seamoth seat belts, make sure they're really tight because this is going to be fast, and let's go. Now let us travel into the distant future, which is just distant enough for us to not know how distant it is. Dolphins are extinct, trans governments are controlling the entirety of Earth, and humanity is spreading into the galaxy via the construction of phase gates, mysterious devices that supposedly allow them to travel long distances. Now you, playing the main protagonist Riley Robinson, are located on a ship called Aurora, which is a ship made by Altera, a trans government that controls a large majority of all the phase gates in the world, who is set to get aboard the ship on a mission to construct another phase gate in the Ariadne arm of the galaxy. Little do you know, well actually you don't, that there is however a secret mission that Altera has given to the Aurora crew, which is to help look for survivors of the Degassi ship, a ship that flew by close to where you will be constructing the phase gate about a decade ago and has not been heard since. Now you fly for a few months only to reach a planet with a codename 4546B, where the Degassi ship was supposedly last heard of, when suddenly Aurora is struck with an energy beam from the planet which causes it to pummel down onto the planet's surface covered in water, with all 157 people aboard it, some of which just barely managed to escape in detachable life pods. Now when you awaken, your life pod is on fire, so you need to grab the fire extinguisher, put it out, and as soon as you climb out through the roof, you find yourself on planet 4546B, a mysterious world full of life and almost completely covered in water. Now this is where the survival gameplay begins, as you start to explore the world, gather materials to make better stuff to better explore the world, to gather better materials to better explore the world. Now, as you're exploring the planet, you can find some of the other life pods that have detached. Unfortunately, their inhabitants have most likely perished since, and you're now supposedly the only remaining person alive on the planet, so it's only up to you to find a way out. Now, of course, as you're exploring, you can find some logs from the Degassi crew, where you can learn about their eventual fate, how two of them eventually succumbed to a mysterious illness, and one of them, called Marguerite, was last seen riding off on a huge predatory animal into the dark waters. Do keep this one in your memory, because it will be important in the next game. Anyways, as you explore the surface, eventually, you find some very mysterious structures made out of dark grey metal. Now, very quickly, it turns out these are actually alien, and you find out that the planet is in fact filled with bits and pieces of alien technology of a race of mysterious precursors, which seem to have lived there approximately 1000 years ago, and were, supposedly, looking for a cure to a mysterious bacterium called Kara, which has been decimating hundreds of thousands of worlds out there, killing billions in the process. Now, as it seems, they arrived to this planet, as they have with many others before, in the hope of finding a cure, but unfortunately, disaster struck and one of the hostile alien life forms attacked one of their lower bases, releasing the samples they had into the water, essentially causing a mass genocide to many of the life forms surviving on the planet. So, now it's up to you to find a cure or succumb to the illness yourself. Fortunately, unfortunately, another ship called Sunbeam suddenly radios in and offers to help pick you up. Unfortunately, your main protagonist doesn't really talk, so you can't tell them to not go there because they will probably be shot down by the same laser that you were shot down, but oh well, here they come. Unfortunately, as soon as they arrive, you suddenly learn that one of the buildings constructed by the precursors is not merely a building at all, but is in fact a huge alien weapon that will shoot down anything that approaches the planet, as just before the precursors seemingly died out, they put the entire planet under quarantine. Now, stuff's looking dangerous and you are losing hope as you descend further down into the waters and eventually, luckily, reach the disease research facility, where you find out that the precursors have actually in fact discovered a way of producing a cure to the Chara bacterium, which could effectively be your way to cure yourself and maybe then disable the alien weapon that's protecting the planet and then leave. However, there is one big problem. See, what they discovered is that there is an indigenous life form on the planet called the Sea Emperor Leviathan, which produces something called Enzyme 42, 
that can be used to destroy the Chara bacterium. However, there is currently only one specimen of that animal left alive, and it is so old that the version of Enzyme 42 that it produces is simply not good enough anymore and is incomplete, thus only postponing effects of the bacterium and not curing it entirely. It does, however, explain how many of the life forms that you see in the game have managed to stay alive over the period of approximately 1000 years. Now you travel down into the enclosure with the Sea Emperor Leviathan and luckily there are a couple of unhatched eggs of its juveniles that could potentially be hatched by you, thus producing new Sea Emperors, thus producing more enzyme, thus getting you off the planet. After you spend a few hours looking for some incredibly rare grass all around the planet, you're finally able to hatch these eggs, releasing the sea emperors, getting yourself some enzyme, and curing yourself of the bacterium, which then allows you to, as a non-infected person, disable the alien quarantine zone, and now you're all set to go. After the last endless grind of the game, you finally constructed your Neptune rocket, which you can use to leave the planet, you hop in, you enable all the systems, you say bye-bye to your cuttlefish, and you leave the planet, arriving to an Altera base where you're informed that you are in some major depth because essentially Altera owns everything on the planet and you've been using it all this time to construct some handy dandy equipment. So good luck getting out of prison then. But anyways, that is effectively the entire story of Subnautica, grossly oversimplified of course, but it should be just good enough to get you all caught up and ready for the release of Subnautica Below Zero. If you enjoyed the video, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing, all those would be very much appreciated. And if there is anything that you would still like to mention or a major plot point I missed, make sure to leave those down in the comments as well, I would very much like to read them. Now with that, I'm gonna wish you a beautiful rest of today, and I'll see you all in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.